put on his game when you turn up to a match to see uh, uh, whatever game it happens to be and if that player isn't isn't playing Jimmy would always say oh you know what a shame I'm not going to be able to see it. and I think it's like that with De Bruyne I think he's a better tackler than Paul Scholes isn't he <laughs> Daddy got no comment on that Scholes did it deliberately <laughs> I'm telling you he used to dive in it, it was well worked he used to sit in training in training station. he would dive in two footed people would jump and the ball would run off to obviously it was United it would be Keane or Butt or whoever it was and someone else would pick the ball up because you didn't get booked for that sort of that intent you know, or a, a trying to do somebody back then. He got away with it all the time. He was he was a lot cleverer at tackling than people gave him credit for. Uh, absolutely. Uh, quickly, Scottish Cup results today. Livingston nil, Falkirk 1 and Peterhead 2, Dumbarton 3. Great to get live reaction down here from Kevin De Bruyne and Marlon Pack. So as far as the Phil Neville story is concerned, listen, that's going to develop and run and lots of you getting in touch and there's going to be plenty more reaction to it. Whether people think it's a good idea that Phil Neville's got the job, whether a man should have the job at all in charge of the women's team, we will carry on talking about that on 5 Live. Uh, Danny, thank you very much indeed. John, thank you to you as well. Manchester City through to the final of the League Cup and they'll play Arsenal Chelsea second semi-final tomorrow night. Mark Chapnell will be at the Emirates for that. And Flintoff Savage and the ping pong guy is on the way in a couple of moments' time after the news with Alison Hughes here on Five Live. On digital, online, smartphone and tablet, this is BBC Five Live. Scotland Yard's investigating a fresh allegation of sexual assault against John Warboys, who was jailed in 2009 for drugging and sexually assaulting a series of women in his taxi. The claim was made this month, but dates back to 1997. Our Home Affairs correspondent is Danny Shaw. If this allegation is taken seriously and is credible, there's a possibility, if police act very quickly and if prosecutors act very quickly, that a charge could be brought. And if that happened, then clearly that would potentially stop war boys being released. Boris Johnson has been criticised by Theresa May for going public with his call for the NHS in England to get an extra £100 million a week after Brexit. The Prime Minister told the Foreign Secretary discussions about funding should be held in private. Sainsbury says it's cutting thousands of jobs as part of a change to the way it manages stores. It comes a day after Tesco said it was shedding 1,700 shop floor jobs. A court has heard how a man accused of mowing down worshippers outside a North London mosque in a van last year has told people he was a soldier and was going to kill all Muslims. 48-year-old Darren Osborne, who's from Cardiff, denies charges of murder and attempted murder. The US Attorney General Jeff Sessions has become the first member of President Trump's cabinet to be questioned over alleged Russian interference in the election campaign. He met the former Russian ambassador to the United States on three occasions during the campaign. The Shape of Water is leading the Oscar nominations with 13. British actors Daniel Day-Lewis and Gary Oldman are among the nominees for Best Actor, while Christopher Plummer is up for Best Supporting Actor for All the Money in the World, after he replaced Kevin Spacey in Last Minute Reshoots. Here's our entertainment correspondent Colin Patterson. Rachel Morrison has become the first woman in history to be nominated for cinematography. Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead being nominated for Best Score for The Phantom Thread. And my favourite one, The Silent Child, Maisie Sly, six years old, profoundly deaf, first time she'd ever acted, and now she's on her way to the Oscars. That was our entertainment correspondent, Colin Patterson. The best live sport, the EFL Cup. It's been more the classic first leg of a semi-final. It was honours even in the first leg at Stamford Bridge. Moses shoots, saved under the post. And now Welbeck turns on the edge of the area. Now, Arsenal host Chelsea in the semi-final second leg. Kick-off, 8 o'clock. Who will make it to Wembley Wednesday night? So don't miss that. On 5 Live. Magic number. What does it all mean? Hello and welcome to Flintoff Savage and the Ping Pong Guy. That's me, Matthew Side. We're back with another set of meaty topics. First, we're going to discuss big issue this work life balance. Then we're going to talk about what is the hardest and most skillful out of our respective sports, cricket, table tennis and football. Remember, you can use the hashtag Fred Side to suggest future topics for later shows. So let's talk about work life balance. All of us do jobs I think we really enjoy. 
But what about spending time with the kids? What about spending enough time with one's wife? How do you get the balance between being very professional about the job you do on the one hand, and many people listening will work long hours, very long hours, some people only a day off each week. How do you get that balance right? We've been discussing it a lot off air, thought we'd give it a go on air. Fred, you're probably the busiest out of all of us. Really? I'd say so. Hmm. Variety of jobs. Variety of jobs. Is it? Is, it's a tough one because, I'll be honest with you, I think in the past few months I've not got that right. Yeah. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's hard because you're in such a fortunate position yeah. where there'll be people listening and they'll think about their jobs and they'll think, you know what, I've not got my work-life balance correct, mm. but don't really have a choice. Yeah. Because they work so hard to provide for their families. Yeah. And it's not getting the luxuries of things or things they don't need. It's the actual crux of life and the actual things that their family needs. And they'll yeah. work long hours and they'll wish that they're taking the kids to football on a Saturday morning or they'll be able to do the drop-off or the pick-up from school. Yeah. Um, well, I think the three of us are in a different position. I think we're more fortunate. I think yeah. we have got more choice. Yep. Yeah. And I think in the past few months, I think it's coincided with turning 40. I think it's coincided with a lot of things and the work I've taken on. I second too much on. Mm. And then you think about some of it and I don't need to do it. But there's that fear. I, I think the biggest thing is the fear of yeah. missing out on something. Yeah. It's the fear of not taking a job and then not getting another one. Yeah. Or not taking a job because you want to get in with someone or you want to do it because you want to build a relationship. Yep. It's a fear of missing out on work. And I've started to come to the conclusion that I'd sooner miss out on the odd job mm -hmm. than miss out on what my kids are doing. Yeah. Because I'm 40, I'm halfway through my life, my kids are at the start of them, and I've done what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an international cricketer. I wanted to play cricket for England. I wanted to play for Lancashire. I did that. I want my kids to have the best opportunity to do what they wanted to do. Mm. And if it means me missing out on something, and I say missing out, and I don't think I'm missing out because I took my boys coaching yesterday. I took them to Old Trafford, and we had two hours in the nets, and we'd done a bit of that since I was home. Mm -hmm. And I loved it more than any job I've been doing recently. I've taken swimming. I take them to the gym. I spend time with them. I get that love and affection. I get a cuddle off them. I watch my daughter play netball or I take her to her art class. Or we just spend time in the car having a conversation. And I'll be honest with you, it's far better than anything yeah. else I do. Mm -hmm. And I just read a quote there on Twitter. and it's, it's, It was a mate of mine, Stephen Ward, who's a boxer. And I'm not into quotes, you know that. <laughs> But he said, some people in life are so poor because all they have is money. Yeah. And there's no truer word said. Mm. I'm lucky it, it, I've got what I need financially. Mm. I want to be with my kids. And I think in times, as a sportsman, you put your family second. And I'm in danger of doing that in my professional life as well. It's like, say, say you do a job and they say, we want you to turn up at, on this day at this time and you're going to do it for X amount. And you'll compromise with them. You'll do exactly what you're told. Yeah. But you won't do that with your family. Yeah. And I'm going the other way now thinking, I'm non-negotiable on this. If I lose it, I lose it. I'm not bothered. What's your take on it, Rob? That's really, What's really your, 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 cause you, you, you I struggle relate, with this, don't you? I do, very much. And I relate it to everything you said, Fred, because when you're effectively, you're, you're like a freelancer, aren't you? Because you can get more work, it can come in. And your diary allows you to do that work if you're prepared to take it on. It's not like a normal nine-to-five job where you've got a certain amount of work that you have to do and no more. And you were saying you feel that you're going to miss out if you don't take an opportunity. Maybe they won't ask you again. The other thing, I think, it's quite flattering when somebody yeah. picks up the phone and says, we'd like you to come and do, write an article or go and give a speech or whatever other event it happens to be. And I think, like Fred, that I've made quite a big strategic mistake of taking all of this stuff on and in the back of your mind you're saying actually it's for the family it's to make them secure but it's a bit of selfishness there too that you don't like to acknowledge that actually yeah. you're quite flattered by the whole thing and over Christmas we talked about what we've done over Christmas at the last pod but one thing I didn't mention is Kathy said just take a week off on our honeymoon I continued to write my column for the Times 
whenever we've gone on holidays anywhere in the world, I continue to write my column. I'm quite a workaholic. She said, take some time off. Took my children swimming three straight days. Um, uh, it was just incredible. Took them again on Saturday. And what you're saying, Fred, is it's priceless. You don't ever get the opportunity to see your kids growing up again. You will perhaps get another opportunity to yeah. do some of the, the other work. And I, I think I like... So you. are you greedy? I think I've been a bit too greedy um, in the last five, this come, five ten years. Has this come recently for you then? So, for instance, writing a, listen, I don't know what you're paid in terms of writing columns for The Times, but since your other businesses take, took off and you go all around the world doing speeches to big, huge companies, mm -hmm. is that recent? Or has yeah, that been over a period of years? Last five years, I'd so, say. So, so basically, before that, and if I'm going down the wrong course, you just tell me, before that, financially, you wouldn't have been in a great place? Been okay? Well, you, you don't think table tennis is well paid? Well, not really, no. <laughs> I would, I would you shouldn't not. be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I, I don't there. know. I would say a bit of whiff-waff. Yeah. I suggest, <laughs> I don't know. You can correct me if no, I'm wrong. Okay, honestly, but, table, table tennis was much better paid than people tend to think. Really? It's so big in China. So, really? Really? so how much, like, for, for, uh, for a layman who knows... Uh, yeah, yeah seven, not you. seven figures. But most top players would... Uh, a million pound? Is that seven, isn't it? Hang on, let's have a think. Yeah. Seven figures? Hang on. <laughs> but a table what, what, tennis. Hang on, no, no, no. no that's, not right. that's not right. That's not right. It would be, it would. Seven, oh, whoa. Oh. No, she might slow down. Just, just cut no, that No, out. no, don't cut <laughs> it out. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Seven no, figures. No, 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 cut that out. Ping pong. No, no. This what, is I meant, what I meant by that was oh. that the top players in the world yeah. would earn seven figures. You know, no, no, a year. No, no, a year. This is amazing. This, this is. Well, you had about my mind is, then. My mind is blown. Well. So, a ping ponger. Mm hmm. Will get a million, a successful one, the a best. million the pound. The, the, Who pays last, you a million pounds the, the, to play the, ping pong? The last tournament I played in Japan, every match you played, you played a hundred matches a year. Every match you won, you got a certain amount of money, yeah. and the winner of the series got a million dollars. No, it's yeah. a ping pong. The super pong. circuit in Japan. Yeah, you played on that. I played. The thing is, though, did you ever win it? This is one of the reasons that I retired. I played forty matches in the long, so it had to get the hundred matches over the year, and it would be sort of interspersed throughout the twelve months. But there was one chunk of forty matches, and you're there. You have to pay your own expenses, but if you're getting a thousand dollars for each win, and you've got a million potential prize fund at the end of it, I lost on, forty Matt. straight matches. Oh, you did forty you did. in a row. Didn't get paid anything on that trip. Zero. Wow! So you don't, you don't get. About, so when you say you get paid seven figures, you don't get a retainer. Nobody pays you like. No, so I was talking about grand, the top fifty grand the top. a year to play a table tennis. Yeah, training. so you get it from a number of different sources. So you have the club. So I played for Bordeaux for five years, Montpellier yeah. for five years. You go out there, you get a retainer. Then go out there. Oh, 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 oh. Rewind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say, rewind. Yeah. Yeah. These two. You, you played ping pong for Bordeaux. Yeah. So, hell yeah. no, I'm, I'm going to ask the question. What did Bordeaux pay you? I'll tell you question. what I got yeah. paid. I'll tell you what I got paid to play cricket. Yeah. Bordeaux. So, so it's, it's four, was it 14 days? So, or, yeah, so there's eight teams in the league. So that was a small part of one's year. Um, I don't know, £50,000? Right. Bordeaux paid you £50,000. Do you know what? I genuinely for 14, can't no, 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 I'm not asking days. what you got paid. Ballpark figures. What, what, what yeah. you get? Yeah. Six, well, six, right, so, so for in instance. In the Bundesliga, somebody would earn, I would say, a quarter of a million. The Bundesliga? The what? Yeah. Bundesliga? Yeah. yeah. What? Is it Bundesliga yeah. table and tennis? So you play for your Is there club? a Serie A? <laughs> or a... That's small. Or a... Probably other La fun. Liga. <laughs> or a League uh, or a, M M that. MLS. <laughs> <laughs> or a... <laughs> or a what, Rob? You're a football. Or a, I can't think of any other leagues. Or a... Or a League One. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> League Two. Back to your roots. Yeah. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, so that's fascinating. But yeah, so you, you, you'd get money on the... And then there'd be the international pro tours, ITTF pro tours. These are organised by the world governing body and that would have... I don't know. The top prize would be fifty thousand dollars. So, how many teams? Yeah. So, if you, say, say for instance, related to cricket, right? You're a cricketer. Yeah. So, like, say, say a cricket, uh, a top one in county cricket. Let's say he earns hundred grand. Yep. Right. He's fortunate enough to get a contract in the IPL, and then say he earns quarter of a million dollars. You might get another hundred thousand dollars in the big bash, right. similar in yeah. whatever. So he's traveling the world, playing all these, and he's England money. Yep. So it all starts accumulating. Exactly. 
So for a ping ponger yeah. <laughs> to start, say say you're you're a good ping ponger, right? You're you're, you're top of your game. Yep. How many teams are you going to play for? Right, right. So you play for the national team. Yeah. In how much international competition? So that would depend. How much on would how an much international pro- ping ponger get now? Well, it depends on if you're winning the pro tour events. But if you win, I think the World Cup prize money must have been about fifty thousand dollars for the winner. Right. Then you play in the sponsored events. I played in competitions in America, the Sears Classic, and the you? Killer Spin tournament. Killer Spin. Killer Spin. Killer spin. Killer spin. Killer spin. No. Then you play for then you play for your <laughs> killer spin killer tournament. tournament. Then you play for your club. Oh. Then you play for your club. Is that that America? Could be Bundesliga that America? or French league. The killer spin, the killer spin in America. America. Chicago. Madison Square Garden. Where? Where? Full house. Chicago. That was in Chicago. Do you play in all these? Do you know before one of the killer spin events, we went out <laughs> to the. We went out and the you know the the NBA, the Chicago Bulls. Yeah. yeah. During the half time, we did the exhibition. We did an exhibition you did. in front of the, yeah. Who pulled out? <laughs> <laughs> There's Douglas. <laughs> if you want to hear more about work life balance, please download the podcast. Should we flick on to the next topic? Yeah. What is this it? This one on social media has been posted by Barry Mason. All right, Baz. And this is going to be, yeah, Baz. Out of your respective sports, cricket, football, table tennis, which one is the most mentally challenging? Good question. Cricket. Which one is the most skillful? Which one is the most athletic? Cricket. Mentally challenging. Is there a short, sharp, short, sharp on this? Yeah. So you going to you defend? Do you know what? Mentally challenging. I'm going with cricket, and the reason I say that is How? because I'll tell you why. You could be a fantastic batsman. You could be in the form of your life, and you might get an unbelievable. Could be delivery. three nil down, and, and then the and, and, final two tests don't matter. And instead, of go past the outside edge, you get a nick. Then you have to go back to the pavilion. You have to wait. For your next innings, could be a day, could be three days, might be two weeks. Yeah. And you've got to dwell on it, you've got to ruminate on it. I think as a batsman, that is mentally extremely well, well, important. As a bowler, well, well, a you, could be, you could be a roaring. A have a bad game, oh. and he's, he's, he's a footballer, a football manager, could be one game away from the sack. Agreed, oh, management is difficult. We're talking so about, about the players. sport itself, oh, the players. Part By of the way, part Fred of the could sport. go and have a, the, the best spell of his life and keep going past the outside edge without getting the nick. Oh. And he's got to tell I My fault. The amount of oh, I agree, but I think that is mentally tough. What about fo- football? You get told where to stand. If you're a defender, you can't go past a certain line. That's where you hang go. On, hang on, hang but on. But you're running a little box. Hang on, hang on. Talk about a striker, he can't run back. Things were hardest, <laughs> more skillful, most athletic. He's playing in soccer aid. He has, he's, he's on the <laughs> treadmill. He's, he asked me for tips out of control. Throw the ball. I've not asked that, but <laughs> if I was out of all the people that I know, if I was going to ask someone, him, the gym is pathetic. I reckon, he's on the treadmill. I reckon he's pathetic. Wrong, he, he, thinks he's, he thinks he can play a centre half. If I, if, I, if I was going to ask someone how to control the ball in my phone, there's probably ten people I'd ask first. <laughs> well, ten. I'm doing it right then. I'd ask Jamie Redknapp first. <laughs> Paul Nickoff. <laughs> Sure, daughter. <laughs> I'd ask Eddie, who's 80 at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about mentally. mentally. Come on, Men- cricket is mentally tough. Mentally, OK. I mean, cricket, so, cricket mentally, all it is is a mental game. Yeah, it is. Mental, but mentally, as a footballer, the, the scrutiny on a, on a footballer now, especially in the Premier League, is if... if So the Ashton team just got hammered. Hammered, yeah? Yeah. We forgot about it already. If a footballer has a shocker, it's, it's in the papers for the next two weeks. So mentally, for a I football, reckon, it's much tougher. I reckon you're the easiest here. Uh, what? Right. Easiest? Well, because you, you, stood in a, you stood on a field, right? Hang on, hang on. Waiting you for... stand on a field for three <laughs> days at times exactly. and don't move on third leg. I'll tell you, how, how, third men- man. how mentally huh? challenging is that? Well, you, you, <laughs> no wonder I want pills. <laughs> you can't say you just stand there. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... <laughs> So you stood there waiting for the ball to come and you're running around in your little formation yeah. waiting for the ball and then you, you get it and you've got to kick it or oh, at least 10 yards to a, someone in a similar shirt. <laughs> to me, that's not mentally taxing. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> Matthew of course says, it is. I reckon table tennis is. It's so, tough, yeah. yeah. What? Because, because, right, listen to this. Take, take the fact that nobody's interested. Right? Yeah. Take that out of it. Got that. Right, if if you're a table tennis player or a ping ponger, as I like to call, them, <laughs> then that is your that is it's you. That is your yep. that is your world. It's just you on your own. You've not got the backup. If I say, for instance, I never thought like this, but if I don't perform, my team has still got a chance because somebody else can come in. If you don't perform, 
You can hide in football. I've yep. seen them do it. So you've you got all these other people around you. Ping pong, Nowhere it's to hide. just you. And he's mentioned before about the... He's mentioned about cash. If you don't win, you don't get paid. Yep. Ping pong, you can play in your garage. <laughs> How can that be mentally tough? Hey, table tennis. You can you play, play in your spin. garden. Let's well, not start that. Huh? Yeah. yeah. He's a ball. You can't say Put table. Your jumpers down. So, off you go. Think, think about this. Think about this. The tennis. ball travels. Cricket. Freddie can bowl at ninety miles an hour. They can hit the ball at hundred miles an hour. Danger. Only, danger. Yeah, you're only, only a few feet away from your opponent. Reactions. Spin. You're on your own. There's nowhere to hide. Mentally, it's tough. By the way, the margin of error is so small in table tennis as well. Yeah. You know what it's like. Oh, you have to get the angle slightly so wrong. It. Goes off the side of the table. In yeah, football, mental, you can play the percentage. Oh, okay. Mentally, mentally, you're always one tackle away from a, 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 ending your career. Yeah, that's that is tough. Who is? Well, in you football. could be. I broke my leg. But I didn't know if I was going to ever play again. One, you, every time you step onto that football field from the age of, don't well, start playing that yeah, game. No, you it's are one mentally, ball coming at you your are, at under you, a mile an hour. You are one, yeah, play yeah, that fair game. point. Fair point. Fair point. And there's in table tennis, there's a plastic ball coming at you, which is about that big. Mentally tough. It has to be in terms of the Premier. I'm talking about Premier League. There is life outside the Premier League. Obviously, I think as a footballer, the higher you go. The mentally tougher because the scrutiny in this day and age on social media is so tough. I reckon the lower down the okay. leagues. What? Who's it been harder for mentally? I'm just picking out Wayne Rooney or Joe Root. What recently? No, just in, in their careers. Joe Root. No chance. No that, chance. That is one thing, Fred. You have to acknowledge footballers. They do one thing wrong. It's on the back pages. Even if it's quite a trivial thing. Well, what was let's, it? Was it let's, De- let's, Robbie? Let's, let's, Robbie, was it Deli Ali who flicked a finger at somebody in, in, in his own team, wasn't it? It was Deli Ali. I think it was. Who, yes. who flicked the that was like it wasn't just the he back was joking. Pages I think he was. Page. I think he, was, he said it, he said he it was, was a joke. He was yeah. doing it. As a joke. That, it was if on if the he back did page that in cricket. If an England player did that, they'd be everywhere. Look at Ben Stokes. And this is some trivial gesture to another player as part of a joke. It wasn't just on the back page. It was. A, it was the biggest story for a week. It was like this so, massive so, so national so debate over this teenager or this young man. Delhi Ali's flicked the bird in jest to his mate. Yep. And it's in all the newspapers. It was the biggest story of the week. Oh wow. So, Deli, 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 Deli Ali... Why do you have a funny voice on? Because I'm trying to stress my point. Right, so, Deli Ali... Flicks... It's just not a flat earth, you know, you're wow. losing battle. He was, he was so vilified all across the, social media. Flicks the bird to a teammate in Jesse. Oh, have a giggle. Oh, Deli, you little card, you're a wag you, Deli, aren't you? Right? Gets picked up by the newspapers... You know what it's like. Yeah. You go in the dressing room the next day, they've all got the newspapers, he's having a laugh about it, the rest of the team are having a laugh about it, he gets in his Bentley, goes home to his 10,000 square foot house, <laughs> I'm sure... 5,000 the... smaller than yours. <laughs> well, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit older than him. But, see what, I, 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 think that is a, I think that is a bad analogy. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I, think the Wayne Rooney, I, I think the Wayne Rooney one's better yeah. than Dele Alli flicking yeah, the Wayne bird. Rooney... Has a fl- on. Mentally tougher then. Yep. Mentally tougher. Playing international football for England, England cricket, England football, or England table tennis. What's football. mentally tougher? Football. football. Football? Why? Nothing's what? expected of you. You don't. I think that if you're in the England team and something goes wrong, football, football. at a World Cup, you become a scapegoat. Look They're not bothered. I'm, are they? I think that is difficult. So, when you think when you think about Chris Waddle, what's Beckham, the first thing Beckham that comes 98. Beckham. Beckham burning oh, get him on burning effigies. <laughs> burning effigies. Yeah. So, he had to get escorted into a yeah. wayground under so, armed guard. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, you can't budget for stupidity. It wasn't even that bad a challenge. It was a bad a challenge. Off. Never you can't event. budget for stupidity. Yeah. I th- I think that the So cricket... we agree in football's mental. No, no, no. no. I, th- no. I think cricket is is a no. is a tougher game in the sense that They stand they have sandwiches. That's they how tough off, it is. We need, to, we need to eat. For lunch. <laughs> That's how tough hey, it is. They've got, 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 got a three-course meal at lunch. You have to come off after you two hours. You stand there. You have to come yeah. off for two hours and comfort <laughs> eat. You stand it's there. That, yeah. It's Mate, that challenge. Let's take cricket. I think let's just take cricket. I think playing for England. Mentally tough cricket. You go in if you're a batsman. You can sit in a dressing room with all the TV. I see him in the lords, whatever, the feet up. Eating crisps or whatever, watching TV. You go into bat, you're out. You've got lunch. 
sandwiches. <laughs> on, on, then, on, on in it. your field, you're standing in a field for the day and a half. <laughs> Mentally tough. Yeah. And, you, and you don't even play if it rains. Mentally tough <laughs> You don't football. even play if it rains. Mentally tough football. Rain, you come in. Best game of your you life. You can't play in the rain. You just ran round next to someone. <laughs> you can't. You ran round next to Frank Nozola. Yeah. You didn't even get the ball. You can't tell me that's difficult in following. the rain. You played follow me leader. <laughs> don't say, don't say that's mentally, mentally tough. Mentally tough. <laughs> what a, I, this is like on, only thing I can equate it to. Sat in the dressing room, and I, I'd, have a, I'd have something to eat. They used to fight. They used to feed the gladiators in ancient Rome before they went into the <laughs> Col- Colosseum. That's what it's like. You're walking. You're on your own. You walk out there. You don't know what's going to happen. You got some bloke snarling at you. He's got a hard cricket ball in his hand. Not a pig's bladder. Oh, see, a hard <laughs> cricket ball. A corky. Basically, a corky. Well, basically, Robbie if you're no good at football, you decide to be a cricketer or a table tennis player. No, you That's don't. What it is. It no, is. What happens is, if you're no good at school, you decide to be a footballer. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in bottom hey, set for maths, okay. you play football. Mentally you, tough. Yeah. Anyway, what's the next one? Most what, okay. What is skillful? The, so we've done. Oh, what is the most mentally just, tough? What is the most skillful? Come on, the skill. Come on. So would you? You okay, use your feet. I, I'm just going to say. You think you are more. Just, you say, think you are more skillful you as dra- an athlete than you, Fred. What? You think you are more skillful as a sportsman than Fred, who could bowl. Bat and field. <laughs> you, could, you could only use well, one foot talk, a little bit. We're, we're talking about. We're You've talking got two about two feet. One of them was a standing up one. <laughs> we're talking about. You can trap it further than I can kick it. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about football as a sport, table tennis sport, and cricket sport. Yeah. Would you pay to watch we're Ronaldo, about paying. Lionel Messi, or would you pay to watch? Kevin Peterson and B. Rap Corley. That's not the What's argument. Wrong, hang on. You've moved, you've moved. Skillful. Oh, yeah, but hang on. Messi. Skillful. skillful. I'm talking yeah. skillful. Messi. I'm Me- there to watch Virat Corley. Then That's Messi. a personal preference in yeah. sport. We're not talking about who we're paying to watch. We're talking about which is the more skillful sport. It's got to be football. Ha- why? Hang on. Why? You've just got to hit a ball. Hit a ball. Yeah. Would you like me With to a talk- bat. Would you like me to With talk you through the many variables? With a bat. Football, <laughs> and the higher up the field you go, the more difficult it becomes. Well, the Matthew field, will say, Matthew's difficult. big into football, Fergie, Beckham, the, the class of <laughs> this is why he's, right? This is why he's a good adjudicator. You must admit, Matthew, <laughs> yeah. there's 90,000 people there, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> putting the ball in the back of a net from tight angles, acute angles, working stuff out. Have you the seen skill, the size of nets? The skill involved in that. Have you, you got, seen the size hey, of the nets? How did he miss a penalty? Mate, How did he not even hit the targets on a penalty? Skillful. Took, you got a bit of football. one at Wembley. Penalty. Ian Walker in goal. <laughs> just, just slotted it inside nets. I'm going no football. Problem. You're going cricket. Just side foot it. Why is cricket more skillful? Where would you like me to start? Anywhere. Anywhere? Quickly. I can't do it quicker. There's too much to go at. Okay. There's many facets What's to it. What's skillful in, in... Okay, what what is skillful in, in a ball coming straight at you? What, <laughs> judge, judge, judging the pace when you've got 0.4 of a second to react, yeah. seeing how it's going to bounce, seeing where it's going to pitch, deciding... You're just in Australia, it bounces straight decide, at you. Deciding where, it's gonna, deciding where you're going to hit it, knowing exactly where the fielders are. Where do you want me to start? Then the spinner, got to read it out of his hand, knowing which way it's spinning, how hard it's spinning, how much oh. the surface is spinning. Well, well, I, I, I start, say, reading for the me, wicket, reading the pitch, reading the bowler. Oh, but, but, I mean, that Robbie Savage, you got a bat he, that wide. That's he, he, it. They're massive. The bats, you know like the, the bats are huge. This day and age, wider. Well, they have. They're massive. Not Can you lift them up? They're heavy. Go on, I think you get, to, you, you get to the top. This uh, is like teaching an Alsatian to sing. I heard you on that musical. You done. My da 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 da. You can't educate for. If you want to hear more about which of our sports is the most challenging. Please download the podcast. Thank you for listening. You can download the podcast for extended versions of all the topics we covered on this week's show at the Five Live website and all the usual podcast places. Also, all the shows we've done to date are available to download there. Please use the hashtag FredSavSide and get in touch through the week. If you could leave a review on iTunes and give us a rating, that would be magnificent. We'll be back next week at the same time. But for now, from all of us, goodbye. Thanks to the guys. They'll be back next Monday here on Five Live Sport. We're back tomorrow night with the second semi final Arsenal Chelsea, an eight o'clock kickoff. Mark Chapman has the build up from seven for the right to play Manchester City in the final. Bristol City putting up another great performance here tonight, but it wasn't quite enough. Good night from all of us at Ashton Gate, and Phil Williams is next. Thank you, Mark. Coming up, it's Awards Central with us, the National TV Awards, all the results and reaction from the winners and the red carpet. Our entertainment correspondent, Colin Patrick. 
Patterson joins us after the news. We'll tell you who's in the running for the Oscars. Those nominations came out at lunchtime today. And our big Half Eleven Tuesday night interview for you tonight is with the multi-million selling Jojo Moyes. You might have read Me Before You, or you might just have seen the film with Amelia Clark. And the character that Amelia plays, Louisa Clark, is back in the third instalment called Still Me. Jojo reads from it for you exclusively in half an hour's time. First for news and the best live sport. This is BBC Five Live. Oh, all right, in an hour's time. Because otherwise it wouldn't be the big 11.30 interview, would it? No. 10.30, Tuesday night. Phil Williams here with you on Five Live and the late news hour. The main news on Five Live. Police investigate a new allegation against the convicted rapist John Warboys. And in sports, Manchester City have reached their first final under Pep Guardiola. This is BBC Five Live. Yeah, I can hear you chanting you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, 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 very funny. With the latest BBC News on Five Live at 10.30, Stuart Clarkson. Scotland Yard says it's investigating a new sexual assault allegation made against the rapist John Warboys dating back to 1997. The 60-year-old is due to be released on parole after nine years in jail at the end of the month. Boris Johnson's been criticised by some senior Cabinet colleagues for making public his call for the NHS in England to be given extra funding. Theresa May says discussions about the health service should be held in private. Sainsbury's says thousands of its staff will be affected by proposed job cuts. The supermarket's scrapping some management posts. It comes 24 hours after Tesco said it was cutting 1,700 jobs. And Anton Deck have been named Best Presenter at the National Television Awards for the 17th year running. They also won the awards for Best Challenge Show for I'm a Celebrity and the Bruce Forsyth Entertainment Award for Saturday Night Takeaway. Let's get all the sport tonight. Here's Joe Curry. Manchester City have reached their first final under Pep Guardiola as they beat Bristol City 3-2 on the night and 5-3 on aggregate in the EFL Cup. Midfielder Kevin De Bruyne says reaching the last two means everything to the team. They'll face either Arsenal or Chelsea. Elsewhere, Celtic have gone 11 points clear at the top of the Scottish Premiership with a 2-1 win against Partick Thistle. The former England defender Danny Mills has told Five Live the appointment of Phil Neville as the new England women's manager is strange. Neville has signed a deal that will see him take charge of the team until 2021. Mills, said that Mills says he wishes Neville all the best, but that he'll have to learn very, very quickly. Meanwhile, after saying on Twitter how proud and honoured he was to take up the role, Neville has since deleted his account after past tweets came to light. And Surrey's Sam Curran has been added to the England squad for the T20 Tri-Series against Australia and New Zealand. Curran joins his brother Tom in the squad. Yesterday, Joe Root confirmed he was being rested for the T20s, which begin early next month. This is BBC Five Live on digital, online, smartphone and tablet. The weather rain heavy at times, spreading across northern and western areas through the night. Drier elsewhere, but generally quite cloudy. Windy as well, severe gales possible for western Scotland. Going to be a blustery day tomorrow, though. Strong winds continuing in northern Scotland in particular. Uh, heavy rain moving south eastwards tomorrow through the day across England and Wales. A brighter day for the northwest tomorrow. Highs tomorrow, 13 degrees in London, 7 in Belfast. The first chapter of a magical story has begun. It's action packed. Out of this world. With the most magical fairy tale ending. The BBC Short Story Writing Competition for children aged 13 and under is back. With an awesome new prize. A ride in the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and a truly scrumptious tea on the Thames aboard Her Majesty the Queen's Robarge. And you could be at Hampton Court Palace for this year's grand final. To enter, go to bbc.co.uk slash 500 words. Enter by the 22nd of February. 500 words. Let your imagination run wild. The Late News Hour with Phil Williams on 5 Live. 10.33, welcome to Tuesday night's programme. Jojo Moyes in an hour's time here on 5 Live. Be my big Tuesday night interview. Uh, we just recorded that, actually. So I can tell you that uh, Jojo's on fine form. You get an exclusive excerpt from Still Me, the latest in the Louisa Clark trilogy that is out on Thursday here in the UK. So a sneak preview of that for you. And why Jojo doesn't like her books being categorised as chicklet. So that's all to come at half 11. They're still mopping up at the O2, though, where the National Television Awards took place this evening. Anton Deck cleaned up. Not the building, obviously. The awards, winning all three categories they were nominated for, including the new Sir Bruce Forsyth Entertainment Award, which they got for Saturday Night Takeaway. And they were presented that award by Sir Bruce Forsyth's wife. 
Dr Foster Emmerdale and Lima Slev also getting recognition tonight, as did Sir David Attenborough for Blue Planet. Colin Patterson is the busiest entertainment correspondent in the world because you'd have heard him at lunchtime doing the Oscar nominations and he <laughs> hot-footed it to the O2 from where he joins us live. How are you doing? How's your evening been? I'm doing all right. There wasn't much crossover between the Oscars and the National <laughs> Television Awards. I think it's fair to say, Phil. But a really fun night tonight. You picked out the big winners, Ant and Deck. We're going to hear a little bit later on the speech that Ant gave from the stage. He was getting very emotional speaking about the difficult year. But I know. You